answered uh, for that temple to be. Amen. Uh, stay with me for just a minute. I'm laying just a little foundation here. Uh, but they went through and they began to design this temple. Uh, they had the outer court set in place. The inner court set uh, with everything that needed to be there. Uh, they had the holy place, uh, the ministering place uh, with all the different pieces of furniture. Uh, they had exactly designed to the specs. Uh, I wish I had some time to dwell on this. Uh, I've been teaching on the tabernacle and the, the temple, amen, and the tools and the instruments and every single one of them uh, are a type of who Christ is and what he will become. Uh, for instance, uh, when we look at the candelabra, amen, uh, amen, or the, the, the candlestick, the golden candlestick, uh, it was made of one solid piece of gold uh, and it was beaten, amen, uh, represents the divinity of Christ, the purity of who he is. It is a substance that has nothing else added to it. When we look at this candlestick, there was one post that rose up with three on each side. Each of those three little candlesticks that were branches represent you and I, the church. But we get our life and our support on the center post that is grounded, that is solid, Amen. And it was beaten uh, so that you and I could carry the light uh, into this world. Amen. Amen. When we look at the detail uh, of what God did uh, with the tabernacle uh, and with the temple, uh, there was so much preparation. Uh, there were days and hours uh, of offering sacrifices uh, that went into uh, this initial prayer uh, of where we see Solomon finally coming uh, to the end. Let me just tell this church uh, the reason why uh, you're in this process of, of 40 days right now uh, is because God is preparing you uh, that when you come to the end of the process, uh, there is going to be an encounter. Uh, there's going to be at the end of the process uh, an encounter with power, with prestige, with a level of ministry uh, that the church hasn't seen before. And the reason why you're in and doing the things you're doing is not because it's a cool Christian thing for us to fast and pray and desire miracles. No, it's because God is God. He's alive. He's real. And we want God to be the God in this place. Amen. That there's no other God beside Him. There'll never be another one after Him. And when Solomon began to pray, it was a very prayer. And all of a sudden there was an altar that was there and the altar had a sacrifice on it and when that sacrifice was placed there and they began to pray, the one thing that they didn't have was fire. God wouldn't allow them to go out and, and get their little bit lighter and start their own fire. We see in the tabernacle that God provided the fire and that Amen. We will never be anything until we receive the, the fire of God's Spirit. Amen. Stay with me for just a couple minutes. We're getting there. Amen. All of this preparation came to one moment in time. When they got to the end of praying, they looked up and a fire fell from heaven. And it went into the altar and it consumed the sacrifice. Amen. The the reason why you're giving up on media and food and everything else isn't so that you can get a Jimmy Craig figure and look good. It's not so that you can look at your friends and say, can I finally borrow that outfit that you got? Now that I've been fasting, I'm cute enough to fit my big thighs down into your little skirt.
And some of us have come today, and we come prepared to give God a few praise. Come on. Uh, we have come today not to get sweaty. I'm going from one service to the next. I don't care what I smell like when I'm done. Because I'm going to preach my guts out when I get there. Is that right? That's right. If I don't preach, don't make me preach. Yeah. Come on. That's right. Hallelujah. And so this God white preacher came all the way up the hill to tell you today uh, that we're here for one common purpose. Uh, it's not about who you are. Uh, it's not about what you've got to offer God. Uh, it's simply all about getting a hold of God uh, and allowing God to come in. Uh, the sacrifice you've done is great, uh, but all it's there for uh, is to create an atmosphere, uh, and an energy that God can move in, uh, and God can come to uh, Right. Right. Amen. I got a little girl, Lauren. And uh, Lauren is my four year old. I have an eight year old girl and a four year old girl. And she's my one that is just, she's, she's let's just put it this way. She's feisty. She's just, she's just feisty. Little Justin likes to pick on her, she likes to pick back. Amen. And uh, the other day she was looking at me, she was, I want something, Daddy. I said, you do, huh? Give me candy. I said, sorry, girlfriend, you ain't getting nothing today. <laughs> and I walked away, my wife just looked at me. And she goes, Daddy, give me candy now. I said, what you gonna do? She said, I'm gonna punch you in the nose. <laughs> and I said, oh, just because you said that, you sit on your bed. She like looked at me, she's like, yeah, I'm playing. I said, well, it wasn't playing. Nah, I, I told her, go get on your bed. I said, go sit down. Relax a little while. She sat on her bed and then she started getting upset. She's like, she starts crying. So then I walk in her room and I said, Now, do you want to talk to me? She said, No, give me candy. So, <laughs> Girlfriend, you're getting ready to meet Jesus today. <laughs> you will not come back one way to take it. Heaven can keep you. Amen. Yeah, I'm done with you. Amen. <laughs> And she looked at me and she put her hands on her little hands. <coughs> Y'all women know what I'm talking about, right? You know what I'm talking about. And she sat back and she goes, I want candy. I said, you don't get nothing out of it and ask it like that. <coughs> See, we come in here after a week of just doing our own thing. And we come to God and we snap. Okay, Jesus, bow down. Get, get to my knees here. Okay, Jesus, do this. Okay, Jesus. Over here, follow me. And we want Jesus to put a little towel on and walk behind us and do everything we tell him to do. And I talked to my little girl. I said, look, I, I want to spank you. I said, but I'm not going to spank you right now. I'm going to talk to you for a minute. I said, let me explain something to you. If you want something from me, you've got to be nice. And you've got to tell me, Daddy, I want such and such. She like looked at me. I said, now, did you get the candy you were looking for? I said, why? I told you to give me candy. I said, so what should you do? Said, I should have asked you. I said, well, would you like to ask me for some candy? She goes, got the little eyelashes. Yes, daddy. Can I please may have some candy? I looked at her and I said, no! I walked out. <laughs> I love being a parent, man. It's the coolest thing in the world. Man. I'm going to mess my kids up psychologically, but I'm going to have fun doing it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Relax. And I walk out, and then I came back a few minutes later. I said, now, how did that feel when I told you no? She's got this loud game, too. She said, it hurt me. I said, why? She said, because I asked you nice, and you were a big, mean man. <laughs> And I said, see, when you're nice, baby doll, I'm going to be a real nice back. 